Hey guys, Megalithic Maiden JJ Ainsworth here, and I'm in Jalapa, Mexico, and this is the town of what I think is the second most important museum in Mexico. The first being the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City. But today I'm not going to talk about the Jalapa Museum, I'm going to talk about an artifact inside the Mexico City Anthropology Museum. And the artifact is known as El Creador or the Creator. So let's take a look at it. Before I get to the specific artifact, I'm going to give you a bit of information about the National Museum in Mexico City and also the site itself, Zalchicalco, where the artifact came from. Hopefully it'll influence you to go take a visit for yourself. The National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City houses the world's largest collection of Mexican art. Highlights of the museum include the Sunstone or Aztec calendar, recreations of Pakal's tomb in the Maya exhibit room, a jade mask of the Zapotec Bet God in the Huaca exhibit room, and many others. The museum has 23 permanent exhibit halls, Archaeology exhibits are located on the ground floor and ethnographic exhibits about present-day indigenous groups in Mexico are on the upper floor. When you enter the museum, the rooms on the right-hand side show the cultures that developed in central Mexico and are organized in chronological order. Start on the right and make your way around counterclockwise to get a feel for how the cultures changed over time, culminating in the Mexica Aztec exhibit full of monumental stone sculptures, of which the most famous is the Aztec calendar, commonly known as the sunstone. On the left of the entrance are halls devoted to other cultural areas of Mexico. The Huaca and Maya rooms are also very impressive. Several of the rooms have recreations of archaeological scenes, murals in the Teotihuacan exhibit, and tombs in the Huaca and Maya rooms. This gives the chance to see the pieces in the context in which they were found. The museum itself is built around a large courtyard, which is a nice place to sit when you want to take a break. The museum is huge and the collection is so extensive that you will need to plan accordingly to see as much as possible. Now I'll discuss a bit about Xochicalco, which is where the El Creador artifact originated. Xochicalco means place of the house of flowers in Nahuatl, one of the pre-Hispanic languages still widely used in Mexico. However, the people who spoke it arrived in the area during the 13th century, 300 years after the city was abandoned. These Nahuatl speakers still inhabited the area around Xochicalco when the first Spanish arrived in the 1520s. The great empire of Teotihuacan had a tremendous influence not only on Xochicalco, but on the rest of Mesoamerica. That influence was still potent almost 900 years later during the Aztec Empire. Xochicalco was a fortress city built on a high hill with a 360 degree view. It is no coincidence that Xochicalco was founded about 650 AD, almost the exact moment when Teotihuacan fell. While the city was beautifully designed in an architectural and artistic sense, it was also carefully constructed for defense. This reflects the chaos and conflicts that erupted when Teotihuacan collapsed. Xochicalco may well have been founded by refugees of that collapse. Tlaloc is one of the most recognizable gods in the Mesoamerican pantheon. He is distinguished by the goggles around his eyes, his fangs, and the forked tongue that droops from his mouth. Slaylock is possibly the second oldest after Huhu Teotl, the fire god. It is certainly true that after control of fire, the next greatest development of archaic times was agriculture. Squash was cultivated in Mesoamerica as early as 8000 BC. Water is an essential element for the cultivation of crop, hence the rain god, Tlaloc, was revered for the crop-sustaining water he brought, but also feared for his great storms which brought lightning and hell. When the Spanish arrived at the Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, 600 years after Xochicalco was abandoned, they found a temple to Tlaloc atop the Great Pyramid they called Templo Mayor. Keeping the earth green was a big job and Tlaloc couldn't be expected to do it all on his own. His assistants were four dwarf-like Tlaloc, who lived with the rain god on cloud-shrouded mountain tops. The rainwater was kept in huge clay jars, and when the Tlaloc broke them, the sound produced was thunder. Lightning resulted when the falling clay shards struck the earth. The Tlaloc were 
often represented in the same way that the Easter Island Moai are shown. In fact, from Zotchikauko itself, artifacts were found that looked just like the Easter Island Moai. Is there a connection? Maybe there's many other symbols carved on the back of the Moai that look a lot like Tlaloc symbols. The Pyramid of the Plumed Serpent was built in honor of Quetzalcoatl, which was another of the most important deities of pre-Hispanic times. He was the patron of merchants, arts, crafts, learning, and knowledge, seemingly a perfect fit with Xochicalco. The lower sloping parts of each side of the structure contain high-relief sculptures of riding plumed serpents in a distinctly Teotihuacan style. In the spaces created by the curves of the snake's bodies, human figures appear in the Maya style. The creator, Zachacalco Morales. This life-size sculpture, modeled in clay, is an adult character of great solemnity. His face shows serenity. The gaze is lost to the front, and the eyes have a semi-square shape with rounded corners, framed by a strip that begins at the brow with two prominent curves, continues as an eyebrow and curls again at the temples. He has a hooked nose, well-marked and protruding cheekbones, a slightly open mouth, showing the front teeth and curved fangs that reach the lower lip. The beard has short hairs and the ears proportionate to the size of the face shows elongated ear flaps. The eyes remind us of those of some deities of the Mayan pantheon, especially those of the sun god. The headdress is formed by the trapezoid triangle symbol of the year, interpreted as time, very common in Xochicalco. Below this is a double band with a peak that protrudes in the center. The hair, like the beards, is combed into seven straight locks that reach almost to the waist, five hanging down the back and two pass behind the ears to the front ending in the arms. Upon researching, you will find that the number seven was a very important symbol to not only Mesoamerica, but to the ancient world as a whole. The trapezoid triangle found in the headdress is closely related to the god Tlaloc, who at this time was not just the god of water, but lived up to his name Tlali, which means earth, and that he was the provider god of life, that is to say of water, vegetation, and animals. That is why he is sometimes represented with his tongue in the shape of a flower, as seen in the stela of Zalchicalco. The character is kneeling, with the left hand on the knee, the right elbow is resting on the leg, and with the hand on the side he holds a vine whose direction we do not know, in one that is in the antithesis of rigidity. The position of the sculpture is similar to that of many deities that appear in the codices, such as the Borgia, the Bourbon, and the Dresden. The four lianas that surround the sculpture have, at intervals, cocoa leaves and fruits. Two of these cells start at the crotch like two penises that run through the groin, go up the back to the shoulder, and are tied together in front of the chest. One point comes to rest on the left thigh, and the other possibly on the right arm. One of the other two vines comes out of the bench on which he is sitting, and the rest is the one in his right hand, and we do not know its trajectory. The lianas that surround the character are not an exclusive element of Zachicalco since we also find them with the same type of cocoa fruits in the Mayan area at Monument 21 in Balboa, Guatemala. Dr. Oswaldo Chinchilla, who has studied this site, says that cocoa is of great value representing the blood of captives. The bracelets in the sculpture are identical to those worn by one of the most important individuals in the murals of Kikaxla. Tlaxcala, the man bird, and there it is clearly seen that they were made up of cotton bands and two seeds. The creator represents a provider and fruitful divinity, hence his two penises, which year after year and cycle with cycle gave life to human beings. For this reason, he carried the symbol of the year on its head and provided wealth, represented by the cocoa that decorates the lianas that surround the sculpture. After much thought and research on this artifact, I believe it is an aspect of the high creator deity we know as Quetzalcoatl, but in its form as the Lord of Fertility, including the aspects of water, earth, and birth. Here in Jalapa, Mexico, I am currently doing research on such topics, and I believe it is a fair assumption to say this deity was inherited from the Olmec culture, the predecessors of the more famous Maya and Aztec cultures. There are examples in the Jalapa Museum that show this style of Olmec creator deity 
in his or her particular form of the earth, the overseer of vegetation and fertility. Thanks guys for listening and this is Megalithic Maiden JJ Ainsworth. Subscribe to me on YouTube here and if you like you can support me on Patreon. Y'all have a good day.